How's it going people? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another video. Today you find me with this absolute stunner next to me, the 981 Porsche Cayman S with a 3.4 litre flat six engine, 325 brake horsepower and most importantly in my opinion, at least in this video, less than £30,000. And when I say less than £30,000, by the way, what I mean is that this car was bought for £29,000 and maybe if you sold it secondhand today, you get maybe thirty-one. But in general, you can get 981 Cayman S's now starting at around £28,000, £27,000, which is pretty ridiculous that you're getting a Porsche and a good Porsche at that for that kind of money. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about the car itself, asking the question whether this is actually a good car for £30,000, one of the best offerings you could potentially get for that kind of money. And I'm going to take it for a drive for the first time. So I've not driven this car yet, but later in this video, we'll take it for a drive and I'll let you guys know my opinions, my thoughts on it. So I'm not sure I've driven a Porsche on the channel before. I have driven many Porsches in the past. Uh, I've not driven a 981 Cayman. So I'm interested to see, is this actually a nice car? And yeah, thank you very much to subscriber for bringing it down today for me to drive if you have a car you want me to drive as well let me know in the comments down below hit me up on emails instagram whatever happy to sort out something so uh yeah as always remember to hit the like button subscribe as well if you're new here without further ado let's get into the video <laughs> Let's start with a quick overview. I'm sure you've seen many Cayman videos if you're here watching this, so I'm not going to bang on too much about the car. Uh, but as I said, 981 Cayman S is the second generation Cayman. The first one was a 987, uh, which was the hardtop version of the Porsche Boxster. So the Porsche Boxster came out as a 986 as a way of getting into a cheaper side of the market, the cheaper end of the market where Porsche wasn't playing as well. They had cars on the 968 and the 944 and stuff like that, but then they came through with the Boxster, which really helped to reinvigorate the brand and get people like me interested in their cars where mostly people who were a bit older like dads and whatever were buying 911s there weren't really things that people who were just kind of like leaving university getting into really good jobs and whatever wanting to then get into a nice sports car there wasn't really that right car in that level of the market or that area of the market and that's when the Boxster came in and then obviously the Cayman came after that and then the 981 came along too. Now what's cool about the 981 is the fact that this chassis is the most recent chassis for a Cayman. So the 718 is on the exact same platform as this. It's just obviously got the flat four engine turbocharged instead in most of the uh, most of the examples. This is literally about as new as you'll get for the money. They came out in 2012 uh, and they ran on until 2016. And I think, well, one of the cool things that I was just told by the owner of the car, I didn't even know this, is that this is the lightest spec of Porsche Cayman you can get. So it's 1,325 kilograms in this spec. The GT4 is 1,405. Obviously that's dry weight without fuel in it and whatever. So this is pretty punchy from that perspective. And obviously it has that 3.4 liter flat six, as I mentioned, with a fair bit of uh, a fair bit of grunt behind it. And I've already heard it driving along. It does sound like it's got a great exhaust on it as well. So it does, it goes well and it sounds well from what I can see. Hopefully when I get to drive it, it will also go just as well. But before I keep waffling on too much about the car, let me quickly walk you around it, show you the spec, and uh, then we'll go from there. Basically, when the car was initially spec'd, the whole purpose was to be a track car, a car that you could take on track days. And I think they did a great job of that because it has the, uh, obviously the standard brakes, the standard suspension, which is supposed to be better in terms of handling. And it's got the standard exhaust as well. That was just a preference piece around sound. You, obviously, some people like to go for the sports exhaust. In this case, it's got the standard ones. If I jump around here, you can see them in there. Uh, the bog standard exhaust here at the back as well i mean it's all it's all pretty standard to be honest like the the whole spec on the outside is quite simple it's not got the gloss paint it's got the standard paint in white as you can see i'm not not uh, telling you anything too much too interesting there but you can see that today i actually matched the car that was not planned by the way i didn't plan on uh, matching myself to the car but yeah i really love the lines on this car the way that it kind of just folds across it looks so exotic in, in a way that maybe the 987 doesn't and don't get me wrong i love the 987 but this just fits 
right. It just does the right job for me. And then you can see here, it's like the idea was to go for a black and white specs. So you've got the black alloys, the black on the door mirrors. And uh, yeah, also it looks like the privacy glass at the back. I need to check we've got the privacy glass, but you can see also the Porsche logos there in black as well, Porsche and the Cayman S logo. And before I take it for a spin, let me just do the interior very quickly. Unfortunately, my uh, microphone decided to die on me, so I had to re-record this part, but uh, let's jump into the car here. As you can see, one thing that I really like about Porsches is their interiors. So it's super premium in here, super plush. The seats are really comfy. The materials feel nice. This is what's super nice about these cars. There's, it's generally all very well put together. Nothing in here makes any horrible squeaks or rattles. And the, the materials are, are generally pretty premium. There's a few bits of plastic and whatever around, but in general, really, really nice. Love the, obviously, the Cayman S on the, on the side plate as well there. And obviously, as well, you've got a good bit of storage in the middle there to chuck stuff into little bits on the sides and you can see back through there into the back of the car as well so yeah all in a very nice and uh and chilled out place to be and obviously here you can see we've got the 718 cayman steering wheel on there rather than the 981 uh just because uh it was it's a nicer steering wheel it looks a bit more modern and really updates the interior of the car so look that a little bit nicer you see it's also got the standard instrument cluster it's not got a sport chrono on this car which is a bit of a shame considering it is uh, built to be a track car or so sorry it was specs to be a track car so yeah that's one thing that maybe they could have considered as part of the spec options but outside of that really really nice interior in here and so since i have this it would be rude not to go and take it for a drive so let's jump in the car take it for a drive and i can let you guys know exactly whether this car is really worth the 30k price tag that it's sitting at so this is it i am literally driving on my first ever road in a porsche cayman s this is actually so far what I love about VW Group cars is that they generally feel uh, relatively similar to people buying them. So like if I had my Polo, then I upgraded to a uh, Golf, and then I upgraded to an Audi, and then I upgraded to a Porsche, I would probably get an understanding across those cars of what it should feel like. Whereas like, if you jump into something like a Peugeot or a different type of car, it sometimes feels a little bit different. Like, everything feels quite homely in terms of where it is. I really feel like I know where stuff should be. Uh, and why I should be pressing to go places, which is always nice. It's nice to feel at home when you get into a new car. It's quiet in here, feels uh, feels premium enough, and I'm, and I'm happy sitting here. So thus far, on this very slow piece of road, all is well. <laughs> um, there's not, not much not much to report. And it also is in the right location as well, because we're currently driving through Radlett, uh, which if you don't know, is actually quite a uh, nice area. Lots of nice cars and stuff around here. And I feel like I'm not out of place. I feel like this is the right car for the occasion. And on a nice summer, summer's day like today, the only thing that could maybe be better is dropping the roof down, but I'm a, a pension, I'm a, sorry, a merchant for, uh, for convertible cars, so that's the only thing. And to be honest, I think the Cayman looks nicer than the equivalent 981 Boxster, so uh, swings and roundabouts, basically. And immediately, as I say, feeling comfortable in it, I can imagine myself or my fiance, who's not really into particularly fast cars, driving this around and feeling comfortable doing so. Like, it's very comfortable and easy to drive. It's, it's no more difficult to drive than some of the more, like, I suppose, or some of the less focused cars driven. So I've driven like the C-Class and a few other cars that are more just for cruises or whatever. I see no reason why I would have one of those cars over this. I'm cruising along nicely, 30 miles per hour, no big deal, and everything is comfortable. Like, I think um, that's what makes this car so nice from the get-go. When I, when I drove the 4C that you guys might have watched the video of, it's different at lower speeds. At lower speeds, it feels like a aggressive car still, or like it always wants to be aggressive. I haven't put my foot on the on the go pedal particularly hard yet, but I don't feel like I'm. I don't feel like I'm getting dragged along with potential power. If you know what I mean, I don't, don't feel like there's power that I am lacking whilst I'm driving along. It's all very comfortable, and I'm just I'm cruising. <laughs> I've been driving the car now for a few minutes and I have to say it's such a nice little car to drive like there's there's nothing uh, about this that I wouldn't want for myself it's so enjoyable to to pull around and just do what you want in. I'm just going to leave a little bit of a gap to the car in front as we pull onto this dual carriageway uh, so that I can show you guys this It is rapid. <laughs> it is actually rapid. Like, but the good thing about it is that 
yes, it's very fast, and you'd expect that of a Porsche. You'd expect the Porsche to be quick. You'd expect the gear changes to be lovely and comfortable. In automatic on sport mode, they change super nice. The gears drag out really nicely. And when you change gears in manual mode, as I've got it right now, similarly, it's immediate. It's, there's no delay, there's no nothing. It feels like you're driving something way more exotic than a Cayman. Um, and, and so, yeah, from that perspective, it's really nice. But the speed is very comfortable. What I did just then, super comfy i didn't feel like i was about to die <laughs> i didn't feel like i was in any kind of danger at any point as i accelerated up through the gears like it was just a really comfy thing to do and also i shifted early like the car revs so let's see if, if i can get some space on this next bit of road i will see if i can let it maybe fly a little bit further as we come out of this corner here from a, a, a pace perspective so actually going really, really comfy and so we're going to go and try to drive some roads now that are a little bit more uh, interesting in terms of their corners then we'll get a feel of how it actually handles so it feels very pointed already but I want to see what it's actually like when I get out on some country lanes so we're just pulling onto a nice little country lane nothing too mental and I'm just going up through the gears nice and quick just to see what the car feels like as it goes to some of these corners. So, this uh, again, not, not particularly strenuous in the car, but what I can feel from the outset is just it's super pointed. Like, as I come through here, everything just feels point and square. I'm going exactly where the car, well, I'm going exactly where I want to. The car's doing everything I need it to. And I know that I'm well below any kind of speeds that I uh, would be putting the car at any kind of, I don't know, hassle or strain, but it's really comfy. Like, the thing that I noticed straight away when I got into the car at slow speeds was just how pointed it was left and right, wherever I wanted it to go, it was going. Um, and that, that makes me feel quite confident that if I was to take this out on track or take it onto uh, some good B roads, I wouldn't be too worried about taking corners with a bit of pace. I can come around here, a bit of bumps and whatever, and the car just handles it nicely. Doesn't even think about it. I mean, I, I mean, the good thing about this so far it, as well is that 30 miles per hour feels like 30 miles per hour. In the M4, 30 miles per hour literally feels like you are crawling. It's the weirdest thing. You're driving around, it's like, it's like boo, 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 boo. you want to be doing more all the time. In this, I'm happy to drive at 30 and not even think about it. So we are now on some country lanes and I've stuck it into manual uh, on sport mode just to get an idea of how the car handles around here. And already I can feel that it's just got so much, uh, it's got so much poise to it on the road. It's really, really comfortable to drive. Like I'm, I'm barely doing anything. I'm not really trying to do particularly high speeds or anything, but as I come into these corners, the brakes feel really solid. Feels like I'm uh, coming in at the right kind of pace and I turn it in. And I mean, I don't even know, I could push this car on for grip so much harder than I probably ever could out here on the roads. Like, it's like wherever you point the car, it goes, basically. And, uh, and I'm sure there is a point where that adhesion will disappear, but I don't know where that is. That whole, uh, that Martin Brundle statement of ambition before adhesion, I've, I'm, my adhesion is way before my ambition in this car right now, <laughs> way, way before. As I drive through these country lanes and as I've been driving through them, I've just felt so comfortable. I really haven't had to do anything major. I mean, it's a bit bumpy, I guess, but this road is a bumpy road. Uh, and as I come into the corners, I just feel so much confidence that I can do whatever I want to do in the car. I think that's what you want out of these. As I was actually saying a moment ago, we're going quite slowly, got a slow driver in front. Um, when I drive this car at 30 miles per hour, it feels like I'm doing 30 miles per hour. It feels like when I do 30 miles per hour, I'm doing 30 miles per hour. And that's one thing that I find when you drive faster cars, sometimes it's not the case. You drive a faster car, you do 30 miles per hour, and it feels like you're crawling along, like you're laboring the car, like it really wants to do more. 
this car can do more, as I've just shown you, but it also feels comfortable at those 30 miles per hour, 20 miles per hour, in traffic, etc. So the vast majority of things that I've done with the car so far have felt comfortable. Um, and I think that's a good testament to what Porsche have done with this Cayman. And I kind of understand why it got such good reviews when it came out. I think almost immediately at 30,000 pounds, why would you not want something like this? Like, or at the sort of like 27 to mid 30s range, this does so many jobs and ticks so many boxes straight away. I, the only things I can take as kind of negatives is that Caymans aren't particularly exotic. So if you were looking for like a, a really exotic car in this kind of price range, then maybe something like an F-Type would be more right for you. But I, I, I honestly think like from a, a an all-rounder perspective, this kind of has it all. It looks amazing, it goes amazing. This is actually a really, really nice car to drive. And uh, yeah, from my initial review of it, I'm having a great time. So as we go on to oh, some more, uh, some, uh, some 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 faster roads, everything I do is nice. It's point and square. It feels like a Porsche. It feels like the Porsche I've driven in the past. It just feels like it handles way better than it really ever needed to. Um, and I think that's a really cool thing about the car. So if I was to summarize this car in a few sentences, I would say like on the one hand, yes, you could daily drive it. You could drive it around to wherever you wanted to. You could go play golf in it. You could go to the shops and it. Maybe you can't fill it up with as much stuff as some other cars, but in general, the, the literage is pretty good. But then when it actually comes to going out on a day out with your mates or going for a cruise or uh, or taking it on a track or whatever it is, you could also do that as well. And a car that can kind of do those two different things is a good car in my books. Uh, and so from that perspective, yeah, I, I've been really uh, impressed by this Cayman. I expected to like this Cayman, if I'm honest. I've driven other cars in the past where I didn't expect to like them. I thought I was going to like this because I thought it was gonna feel familiar. And it does feel familiar, it does feel comfortable. And it does everything that you kind of want it to do. And so if I was to, if I was to buy a car under 30K, I would have to seriously, having driven one now, consider whether this would be the right car for me because like, yeah, an F-Type might be more exotic, an M4 might be as well, but this has probably been, of the three cars, the best all around package in giving everything that I needed to give. Uh, so yeah, we shall see. I need to get my money up first a little bit more. So make sure you hit the like button on this video so I can uh, uh, maybe get one of these as well. I mean, I am impressed. I think if I to answer my question at the start of the video again, 30K, 100%, why not get one of these? I think it's a perfect car for the job. Um, and so yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Have you got a Cayman? Have you, are you considering a Cayman? Do you think the Cayman S is a cool car? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Um, yeah, as I said, hit the like button if you enjoy this kind of content. Let me know as well if you've got any cars you'd like me to review. If you've got a car that you want me to review, then hit me up and I will happily come and drive it. Uh, yeah, massive thanks again to the owner of this car for letting me drive it as well. That's super cool and super kind of him. Uh, but yeah, as always, huge thanks to the page for their support. To you guys as well for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.